You're all very welcome here today for our harvest service. And uh, just some announcements then before we begin. Forced Bally Bay committee members, Forced Bally Bay committee members, if you could hang on after the service, just very briefly, we'll not keep you more than a couple of minutes, just a time sensitive piece of correspondence needs to be dealt with. Um, and just to mention as well about, we've been asked to mention about the Presbytery Scholarship Fund. There is a Presbytery Scholarship Fund that helps people in third level education. So it provides a, a small grant, but a helpful grant for people in third year, uh, third level uh, congregation. Um, however, the, the, this fund depends on people contributing to it. So um, it, is, it is getting smaller and smaller, which means there's less and less money to give in the grants to people at third level. So if, as members of committees here, you think that as congregations we could donate to that, we can talk about that. Um, and also individually, if you would like to donate to that fund, talk to me or talk to Alan McAdoo, and uh, we can tell you how to go about that. It's just one of those things that goes on quietly in the background where people are able to get help. But um, the moderator of Presbytery, David Hagen, and Alan McAdoo as our Presbytery Treasurer have just asked that we make people aware of this and that we need money coming in in order for money to go out. Our evening harvest service this evening at half seven will feature uh, Arlene Scott, who's going to come and sing two pieces for us, uh, as well as Mr. Jason Nicholson. He is the Executive Secretary of the Presbyterian Children's Society. Uh, Jason's not only going to speak about the work of the society briefly, but also is going to uh, bring a message from God's Word. Jason regularly preaches, um, so he's, he's able to do both, tell us about the society and bring us uh, a message from God's Word. So we look forward to that this evening, and we will take up an offering uh, this evening for the work of the, the Children's Society. Um, again, one of those things that goes on quietly in the background, and people do benefit from it. No doubt you'll have heard about the Harvest Mission 24 and the Clonus group of churches from the 7th to the 11th, uh, that, that's the coming week, uh, and all the details are there for you, including a, a social uh, for all ages on Saturday the 12th at 8 o'clock in the Union Hall, Nublis. Force Monaghan have started up uh, a really good programme twice a month on Tuesday afternoons, starting off this Tuesday at half past two um, in the church there, I believe it's down in the basement. Um, and it's a program called Hymns We Love, where each, each time they meet, they look at a, a classic hymn, uh, sing the hymn, and chat about how the hymn came about. There's wee video presentations, and uh, you learn the story behind the hymn, how it was written, and the opportunity of singing it as well. And then, of course, there's tea afterwards. Now, if there's any older members of the congregation that would like to go to that, but aren't able to drive um, if they're fit to walk into a car and out of a car let us know and we'll arrange to get them to that and to the other ones that are coming up um, that's if they're not able to get there under their own steam or there's no one to bring them let us know because it's a great opportunity for people to get together and uh, anyone's welcome of any age uh, that's Tuesday half two and there'll be more details of that we'll, we'll announce it each week as, as it happens so people can know that it's going on our own prayer meeting and Bible studies 8 o'clock in Drumkeen this Tuesday. And Rock Solid, Rock Solid uh, will be meeting again on Friday the 18th of October, 7 to 8.15. So all primary school aged children, welcome to that. We look forward to having our Corley Harvest Service next Saturday, God willing, at 4 o'clock. Um, we'll have folks singing from the choir. I'll, I'm, I'm going to preach at that service. And uh, it, it's always great to gather in Corley, 4 o'clock. Uh, next Sunday afternoon, God willing. You can see the notices there about junior and senior badminton starting back up for all interested in that. And our PW as well on Thursday the 17th at 8 in Dara Valley Hall where the Reverend Daniel Reese martins wife Ruth Jemison is going to come and talk about her story of faith. Uh, you can see the uh, Mona and Elam Church's Harvest Mission on there, all the details of that, as well as the Harvest Reminiscing in Canton's Meeting House and the Harvest of Thanksgiving in Christchurch, Bally Bay. So you can see all the details there yourself and decide what you'd like to go to. Two things then, just to underline and point out especially. Um, 
One is passing it on. Passing it on is a initiative of the Council for Congregational Life and Witness, which is a council that is in Belfast in, in Church House. And their job is to help congregations uh, with their congregational life and witness. So they're coming to Monaghan Presbytery to do two sessions uh, that would be of interest to people. This would be of interest especially to elders and committee members. If you're an elder or a committee member, I would encourage you to try and get along to this. It would be really important. Um, and if you want the link to book, let me know and I'll send it to you. But anyone can go to it. So looking at that, if you think, do you know what? I'd like to go along to that and see what it's all about. No problem. Message me. I'll send you the link. You do need to book in advance, but it doesn't cost anything. Secondly, then, we have Better Together Men. is our new men's group for men of our own group, the Castle Blaney group, and Force Monaghan and Smithborough. So uh, we're planning something each month. In November, we're going to have an evening meal in Castle Blaney, God willing, on Friday the 22nd of November. More about that soon. Uh, but our first outing, we haven't got far to go to see Leslie Wiley's uh, vintage tractor collection, uh, which I've seen twice already, and I'm not even interested in tractors, but I found it fascinating. Um, and we'll have more about that next week, because I know, Leslie, you've loads of room there, but if we all turn up in our cars individually, there mightn't be room for us. So we'll organise how we'll arrive and so on, along with the guys from Monaghan, Smithborough and Blaney. But um, more about that next week. But if you're interested in that, put a circle around it in your diary or calendar and do come along at 11 on Saturday, October 26th. Our praise band are going to bring us an intro now, a wonderful song called Everlasting. Before the mountains were brought forth, or days of spring and summer filled the earth from everlasting, you are God. We dwell beneath the stars in ancient skies. A thousand years are nothing. Everlasting, you 
least have some members of our youth fellowship come and read prayers for us today. So uh, Lisa Fuller is going to do that first of all. Let us pray. As we gather to celebrate this season of harvest, we pause to acknowledge the abundance that has been provided and that we gladly receive. We give thanks for the earth beneath our feet, the rain that nourishes the soil, and the sun that warms our fields. In this moment, let us reflect on how just as planned, seeds are sown, then hard work helped bring them to life, and busy hands tended them with care. May we be reminded of how all living things are connected, and how each plays its part in the cycle of growth and renewal. As we share in this bounty, may we also remember those who do not have enough and let our gratitude inspire us to work towards a world where everyone can share in the richness of the harvest. Let us commit to being mindful stewards of creation so that future generations may continue to enjoy the gifts of the earth. Amen. Thank you, Lisa. Let's stand then, sing together. Come, ye thankful people, come. So thanks, Eden. Let us pray. In gratitude and hope, we celebrate the harvest and the journey it represents, a reminder of life's abundance, resilience, and the potential for growth in every season. We are thankful for hands that tended the fields, the patience that nurtured each seed, and the de dedication that brought this harvest to life. May we remember that each meal is a reminder of our dependence 
on the bounty of the harvest. In this moment, we are thankful for the shared efforts of all to yield the harvest that sustains us and the, and the beauty that unfolds when we work together. May our hands' gratitude extend beyond this season, inspiring us to be mindful stewards of our resources and compassionate toward those who go without. We celebrate this harvest, harvest with open hearts, honouring the journey from seed to table and the simple, profound gifts of this season. Amen. Thank you, Ethan. Well, we stand now to sing once more. May God bless us and be gracious. Now, children, some of you remember that I was in with you on Wednesday morning in Bally Bay Central School, and we had our assembly, and I said, remember the song we're singing today, we'll sing it again at harvest. Anyone that was in Bally Bay Central School for the junior assembly on Wednesday morning, come on up, come on up, and we'll remember the song that we learned. Let's see if you remember it, because it's a really catchy little tune that we can remember. Do you remember I have the very same bag of apples as I had on Wednesday? Do you remember these? Remember those in school on Wednesday morning? Yeah, you were there too, Chloe, that's right. Whoa. Do you remember how the song goes? Will you sing it with me? Right, that's it. Let's sing it together. Are you ready? One, two, three. Keep me as the apple of your eye. The apple of your eye. The apple of your eye. Keep me as the apple of your eye. Psalm 17, 8. Wow, you really remember that well. We were talking in we were talking in Valley Bay Central on at the assembly on Wednesday morning about how God keeps us, Psalm 17, 8 says, God keeps us as the apple of his eye. And didn't someone say, a wee girl, she's not here, she says, is, is it called the apple of your eye because of this little black bit here on the apple? Yeah, that's right. Because, you know, the Bible calls this black part of your eye the apple of your eye. And God wants to keep us as close to him as the apple of our eye is to us. Any more the children want to come up, come up. Because I just wanted to do that wee song with those who learned it. We might sing it again together, but come on ahead up because I want to tell you something else. I want to tell you something else about the apple of your eye. Psalm 17, 8 asks God to keep us as the apple of his eye. And that's not only to keep us close as the apple of his eye, but that word keep 
also means to guard or protect. Now, can I have a volunteer for something that might be a little bit dangerous? Good man. What would you do now? Come on up here. Psalm 17, 8 asks God to protect us as the apple of his eye. Now, what would you do if someone came along and they were going to stick their finger in your eye? Close your eyes. And what else might you do? Move away. Move away. And also, don't be afraid to, yes, belt the hand away. You know, if someone went to poke you in the eye, you'd hit their hand away. Thank you. I didn't, I didn't get to your eye. But God protects us the same as we would protect the apple of our eye. That's what Psalm 17, 8 means. That he will keep us and guard us and protect us as the apple of his eye. He'd not let anyone touch us. No more than we will let someone touch the little black bit in our eye. Do you want to give a go at singing it again together? It's really simple. Let's sing it. Are you ready? One, two, three. Keep me as the apple of your eye. The apple of your eye. The apple of your eye. Keep me as the apple of your eye. Psalm 17. Brilliant. That's great. And on Wednesday, I'll be into you again, God willing, and we learn a new chorus, and we might sing that then again next Sunday. Now, I believe, children, that you have a song that you're going to sing for us, Every Blade of Grass. So you're all up here now, which makes it easier for you to move up here. Oh, yeah, give me the apples back, because I wouldn't advise eating those. They're not really nice apples for eating. Brilliant. Thank you.
Well done, children and choir. That worked beautifully together, didn't it? Both the ranges of voices there coming together. And uh, also thanks to everyone today who so wonderfully decorated the, the church about us. It does look wonderful. And if you look at each window, you'll notice there's some wee different theme in a lot of them, like this one we have, um, th the words and notes of the hymns and the mus music and, and so on down through the windows. And it uh, very well thought out and put together. So thanks to everyone. Um, involved in that and uh, for all, all, all the work that goes into our harvest services this evening and uh, this morning. We're going to read from God's word now, John chapter 4 and verses 34 to 38. Words also appearing on the screen. If you're looking in your Bible there, it's on page 121, page 121 of the Pew Bible, if you have that there. And uh, some words of the Lord Jesus Christ in relation to, to the harvest, as we'll think about shortly, uh, a theme that runs throughout the scripture. This is God's word. My food, Jesus said to them, is to obey the will of the one who sent me and to finish the work he gave me to do. You have a saying, four more months and then the harvest. But I tell you, take a good look at the fields. The crops are now ripe and ready to be harvested. The one who reaps the harvest is being paid and gathers the crops for eternal life. So the one who plants and the one who reaps will be glad together. For the saying is true. Someone plants, someone else reaps. I have sent you to reap a harvest in a field where you did not work. Others work there and you profit from their work. We thank God for this, his holy word. Well, we come to sing once more the classic harvest hymn and hymn of gratitude to God. Great is thy faithfulness. We stand as we sing.
The Christian tradition, as we see on the slide there, the Christian tradition of harvest celebrations has evolved over the last 2,000 years, blending elements of ancient customs, religious observance, and local culture. And it has its roots in both Jewish and pagan festivals that celebrated the bounty of the earth, which have been adapted to express gratitude to God for his provision. As we see in the next slide, the practice of giving thanks for the harvest came to the early church from Judaism, and in particular the festivals of Sukkot, the Feast of Tabernacles, which was a seven-day festival celebrating the end of the agricultural year. This did not translate into a formal harvest festival in the early church, but gratitude for the harvest was incorporated at that time of year into the general prayers of thanksgiving during the communion service. As we see on the next slide, as, Christian, as Christianity spread throughout Europe, it absorbed various local harvest customs in a world where the agricultural calendar was essential to life and livelihood. Festivals like Lamas, which comes from two words, loaf, mass, became Christianized versions of older harvest festivals. As we see on the next slide, in Middle Ages, harvest celebrations often involved religious processions, blessings of the crops, and feasts of thanksgiving for the year's yield. These were deeply connected in people's minds to the rhythms of rural life and the agricultural cycle, making them very important communal events. After the Reformation, the Roman Catholic Church kept specific feast days connected to the harvest, but in England and other parts where the Reformed faith was predominant, the celebration of Lammas and similar festivals waned or became less formal and structured, perhaps featuring prayers of thanksgiving during regular services. As we see in the next slide, the modern version of the Harvest Festival, as celebrated in many churches today, took shape in the 19th century. In 1843, an Anglican priest in Cornwall, the Reverend Robert Hawker, established what is considered to be the first Harvest Thanksgiving in a church setting. He invited his parishioners to bring produce to the church as a symbolic offering of thanks to God. This service set the pattern for the harvest festivals that followed, which have become a solid annual fixture in many churches, with the decoration of churches, special hymns, and prayers of thanksgiving, and charitable giving of food to the poor. Now, all of this has its oldest roots in the theme of the harvest in the Old Testament. As we see on the next slide, the Old Testament books highlighted the agricultural life of the ancient Hebrews focusing in particular on the harvest as a powerful symbol of God's provision, faithfulness, and judgment. Throughout the Old Testament, the harvest is written off as a direct gift from God. Living in an agrarian society, people depended heavily upon the success of their crops and livestock. The Bible emphasizes that it is God who provides the rain, fertility, and protection needed for a good harvest. As it says in Deuteronomy chapter 11 and verse 14, I will send rain on your land in its season, both autumn and spring rains, so that you may gather in your grain new wine and harvest. As we see on the next slide, the dependency on God for the harvest was not just agricultural, but deeply spiritual. A good harvest was a sign of God's favor and blessing. While a poor one, often caused by drought or famine, was seen as a form of divine judgment, often linked to people's disobedience. As we read in Amos chapter 4, verses 7 to 9, God says, I also withheld rain from you when the harvest was still three months away. I sent rain on one town, but withheld it from another. One field had rain, another had none, and dried up. People staggered from town to town for water, but did get did not get enough to drink, yet you have not returned to me, declares the Lord. Many times I struck your gardens and vineyards, destroying them with blight and mildew. Locusts devoured your fig and olive trees, yet you have not returned to me, declares the, law, declares the Lord. And so the harvest played a significant role 
in the religious life of Israel as reflected in the law of Moses. There were three major religious festivals tied to the agricultural year. The Passover, Shavuot, the Feast of Weeks, and Sukkah, the Feast of Tabernacles. Passover coincided with the barley harvest and celebrated Israel's deliverance from Egypt, followed by the Feast of Unleavened Bread. The Feast of Weeks came 50 days after Passover and it marked the completion of the wheat harvest. It was a time of thanksgiving for the grain harvest and the giving of the law at Sinai. The Feast of Tabernacles was celebrated at the end of the agricultural year in what we would call autumn this time of year. And thank God for the full harvest. During this festival, people lived in tents to remember their time living in tents in the wilderness and so increasing their sense of dependence on God's provision. These festivals highlight the deep connection between the agricultural rhythms of Israel's life and our covenant relationship with God. In the Old Testament, the harvest is not just about physical sustenance, but it's seen as a time of communal gratitude and remembrance of God's faithfulness. As we see on the next slide, building on this religious and spiritual heritage, the New Testament writers also saw harvest as carrying a deep, theological significance. Jesus and his apostles frequently used harvest imagery to communicate vital truths about God's work in the world, as well as the role of believers and the final judgment. In Matthew chapter 9, verses 37 to 38, Jesus said this, the harvest is plentiful, but the workers are few. Ask the Lord of the harvest, therefore, to send out workers into his harvest field. You see, the spiritual harvest of people ready and waiting to hear the gospel message is great, but there is a shortage of workers to bring them in. That's why in John chapter 4, verses 35 to 38, which we heard earlier, Jesus also speaks of the harvest, saying, don't you have a saying, it's four months until harvest? I tell you, open your eyes and look at the fields. They are ripe for harvest. The opportunity to bring people into the kingdom is immediate. Today is the day of salvation. There's always, always someone, somewhere, ready to hear and respond to the gospel. Just as there's a, a window of time where the harvest is to be brought in, so we have a limited time on this earth to bring in the harvest of souls for which Christ shed his precious blood. There isn't much time for reflection. People need to be reminded of their sin and their sinfulness. And the law of God as found in the scriptures is the Holy Spirit's chosen means of doing that with a God-breathed power of conviction. Yes, there is much cause for celebration for the physical and spiritual harvest already reaped. But still, we need time to pray. We need to turn to God in prayer, each one of us individually, and seek mercy and forgiveness. Because without mercy and forgiveness, no soul will see heaven. It's good to express our gratitude for God's material blessing, for his provision, for his bounty, for how he has prospered the work of our hands. We also need to be open to hear the Holy Spirit breathe out precious words of assurance and mercy and pardon to our souls which crave mercy and forgiveness. My prayer is that as we celebrate God's goodness to us, as we express our gratitude to him, that we remember that harvest that is being gathered in and will be gathered in, that harvest of souls, that harvest that waits in a world outside. Right now, somewhere, someone is ready to hear the gospel. Someone is ready for God's mercy. Someone is ready for forgiveness. 
What will we do to make that happen? Let us pray. Jesus Christ, Son of God, have mercy on us. Oh Lord, we praise you for your goodness, for your bounty, for there's so much that we have. Oh Lord, we have so much that if we were begin to list it and count it, we'd be here all day. But Lord God, more than any of these things, we need to be convicted of our sin. We need to hear about your mercy and your forgiveness. We need to be born again, washed in the blood of Jesus and reaped as the harvest that will not be cast into the fire, but will be gathered in to your barns, to your heavenly city, there forever to be with you. O oh Lord, keep us as the apple of your eye. Protect us and guard us and fit us for your service that those people who today are waiting to hear will hear of your mercy, of your forgiveness, of your love, of what Jesus has done for them. For we ask this in his precious name. Amen. Well, we come now to sing our closing hymn, God of All Ages. And during this hymn, our offering will be taken up. Of our Lord Jesus Christ, 
the love of God and the fellowship of the Holy Spirit be with us all evermore. Amen. Thank you.